This is a seriously good movie. Like, seriously good. However, I don't think I love it as much as the rest of the internet does. And I'm going to explain why here. Because while it's very good, flawless it is not. <laughs> um, and I think it's one of these films where you have to seriously temper your expectations and take it at face value without coming in and thinking you're going to get one movie and then being disappointed by not getting it because they've delivered something else. And to be real, <laughs> based on the movie which I thought I was getting, and I know I'm not alone in this, I really did have to adjust my expectations on the fly quite quickly because when you think of the end of War for the Planet of the Apes, the previous movie, which I was not the biggest fan of, it ends with Caesar dying and Cornelius, his son, being born. Now, one would think that is the perfect pathway to a fourth movie. What does a world without Caesar look like? How does Cornelius inherit such a heavy crown? How does Cornelius function in a world without his father, but knowing he is the heir to this great leader? That's not the story we get. Now, there's an argument to be made that the Cornelius thing could have just been a nice tip of the hat to the originals. Although, again, chronologically, there's a, it's messy there. Because in the original five movies, Cornelius is actually Caesar's father. So you could make an argument that they're just having a bit of fun with the naming. That's fine. But then, without going into specific details of the plot... There's also a huge argument to be made that had they used the Cornelius character in this movie, it could have actually added a bit of power and gravitas because the central character, Noah, you could have put Caesar's son in that position and the movie possibly could have had a little bit more power. But that's not to say that Noah's not a good character, but we are going to get into that. Here's... As I said, you have to take it for what it is, because this movie doesn't happen following Cornelius and all those other apes. Where those apes are gone? Who knows? They're gone. They're dead. It's a long time ago, because in the first five minutes, this movie tells you after Caesar's death, this is many, 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 many generations later. And you kind of think, hang on, so have we gone to, to Charlton Heston territory here? Are we in that place where, you know... The humans can't talk, which, by the way, in this movie, the humans can't talk other than one exceptional girl called May, who we're going to talk about in a bit. But the humans can't talk and apes are very much the dominant species. They're ruling. And what the movie, I think, lacks a little bit, and I need to go into a little bit of narrative discussion here without giving too much away because i appreciate it's a new movie what the movie does lack a little bit is it lacks the grandiosity of the previous three you know rise of the planet of the apes though it started slow and centered very much on baby caesar becoming the talking ape that's kind of a big deal in that narrative it's like this is where apes learn to talk and then it obviously ends as the credits are rolling with the spread of the simian flu convert and then it continues in dawn the stakes get raised even higher. The apes have now got larger. They've got more powerful. You've got evil apes like Cobra in there who are very much looking to overthrow humanity. And then it comes to war where it all obviously, you know, goes to hell. This didn't have those stakes. It didn't have that grand scale narrative that the previous three had. And that, for some people, might be a major turnoff because it, here's, here's the story in a nutshell. We're following this brilliantly written character called Noah, who, based on how he's animated, you do very much get the impression that he's a descendant of Caesar's. But it's never outright said. Um, although it's, it's kind of implied, but it's never outright said. He's part of the Bird Keeper clan, and that in itself paints a bigger picture because there are now different clans of apes. You've got the Bird Keepers, who are more or less peaceful, and then you've got these kind of followers of Caesar, led by this new evil ape called Proximus Caesar, who you see on screen now. Proximus's big thing is continuing the word of Caesar, and there's something quite profound with this character, because just like the way religion is interpreted, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, quote to Rudyard Kipling there, just the way that religion and faith are manipulated 
in the modern day and have been throughout history of course that there's a very very clear narrative and critique of that facet of society because this kingdom this clan that proximus caesar is leading in their mind they're continuing the work of caesar but if caesar was looking up he'd be turning in his grave because this is not what he was setting out to do these guys fall clearly more towards the cobra end of the scale than the caesar and noah finds himself in a position where his village has been raided due to some bad decision making on his part and he has to go and find proximus's clan and save his clan and save his friends in the meantime along the way he meets this young girl called may now let me find her here may is one of the oh, here she is here may is one of the only humans who can actually speak which is why i was thinking narratively are we getting close to charlton heston here but we're not we're a long time after caesar but a long time before charlton heston may has is one of the only humans who can speak she's not the only one as the movie shows but for the most part she's the gifted human who can speak so you've got all these characters who come into each other's lives you've got noah who's trying to save his clan. You've got Proximus, who's ruling a new kingdom, and you've got May, and the apes of Proximus's clan are after her, and all the while you're wondering why. And this is where the narrative kind of picks up, because whereby, as I insinuated before, the previous three movies had a grand scale, this is very confined in terms of scale, because what does Proximus want to do? He wants to open a vault. That's it. That's essentially the crux of the movie, and if that makes you go, huh? welcome to my party what's inside this vault the macguffin what could be hiding inside this vault that proximus wants so badly and equally what's in the vault that may wants to stop proximus getting while also retrieving an item in there for herself is the big intrigue of the movie i'm obviously not going to reveal what that is that would be giving the movie away but if what they find in the vault makes you go oh wow you will have a very good time with this movie. You will love this movie, in fact. I only liked it because in the vault I was like, well, yeah, duh. Obviously, that's what he's after. And I assume that there's an item in there that she's after to set up sequels and more. And wouldn't you know, that's exactly what happens. They, this is not going to be the Last Apes movie we see. Sequelitis has set in. More movies have been set up at the end of this movie due to what she finds in the vault. So, the problem that this movie has with such a confined small scale narrative is that it's very linear it's like we start here and then we go here and then we go here there's no tangents there's no nuance there's no surprises it's all very straightforward which isn't the worst thing in the world and it didn't make me say this movie sucks as i said at the top i actually really do quite like this movie but it is not without its problems the narrative is incredibly linear um and the the lack of the lack of big scale stakes made me just go a bit huh okay well again you had to adjust your expectations but to end to end this on a few positives water is wet moment here but the effects jesus mary effing christ the effects in this film are good now if you thought they were good in the last one ho, 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 you ain't seen nothing yet there are scenes in this it, again even effects wise it's not perfect like there are scenes with these eagles in the air and you can tell they've got the matting on the con uh, the matting and the compositing a bit wrong and it looks a bit wonky which is surprising considering that's one of the easier things to do in effects but the apes, man. Oh my word. The effects on the apes are good. Things from my like ashes landing on their hair. To, there's a scene in a fast flowing river where an orangutan called Rocco jumps in. I couldn't tell it was fake. It was obviously my fourth self fourth wall break knowing that, okay, that's clearly an actor doing motion capture. But if you allow yourself to be suckered in, there are scenes in this movie where like, I can't tell that that's fake. That looks real to me. These are some stellar groundbreaking effects they really are like well done Weta you've done it again and speaking of the motion capture it's weird in a world where throughout the narrative Caesar's presence is still oh so present 
like you still feel Caesar throughout this movie. But I was never left wanting for Andy Serkis. He's the goat of motion capture. We know this. But man, the cast in this movie put in a solid performance top to bottom. There was not a weak performance in this movie. Everyone brought their A game and it the movie was better because of it. And the last thing that I got to praise, and it's good that this happened because as I said, very linear narrative, a little bit on the long side, and another thing, very light on the action. Like, there are no scenes like in Dawn with, you know, Cobra, apes on horses, riding in to attack the humans. There's nothing like that in this movie. There's sort of some action scenes, but again, just like the narrative of the movie, they feel very, very small. There's nothing big action-wise in this movie. Eh, there's a flooding at the end, which is kind of cool, but it's not big, big, big the way the previous movies have been. So again, adjust your expectations when it comes to the action. But what's good, and this is again a huge credit to director Wes Ball, I cared about these new characters. I cared about Noah. I cared about his clan. I cared about his friends. I cared about the characters who he briefly came into contact with. All the characters in this movie are incredibly well written and they elevate the movie because they're so well written. So we've got a linear slow narrative light on action but heavy on character that's not a bad thing man especially in the blockbuster world where so often you just don't really get characters and they focus so much on the set piece so it's almost weird that i'm criticizing this for lacking big set pieces but every character from the side characters to the mains everything was really really character driven in this movie and as a result, I have to say, I think I'm going to give Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes a 7.5 out of 10, which, again, for me, that is a very good score. Don't be thinking, I didn't get a 10. I very rarely, if ever, hand out a 10s. But here's the thing, right? A lot of people say that this is the best of the New Apes trilogy, of the New Apes franchise. Now, if you're of that opinion, good for you. I'm so happy that you enjoyed this movie as much as you did. I don't think it's it's as good as Rise or Dawn. Those movies are, for me, the two best in the entire franchise, both old and new. But considering the letdown, for me, that War for the Planet of the Apes was, this is a massive, massive step up in quality. It's not quite Rise and Dawn, but damn, it's up there, man. I'll tell you that. It is up there as being a hell of a movie it's definitely one you should see i saw it in imax it's one you should see on the big screen 100 percent. but i do think because of some of the decisions they've made it might divide people a bit i'm a lot of the critics love it it's got good themes it's got good critiques it's got yeah thematically and character wise this movie is good but i am curious to see what audience members are going to say and for that reason i want you to leave your comments below and share what your experience with kingdom of the planet of the apes was i'd love to hear from you there is a subscribe button right here for you to check out if movies are your jam then hopefully this is the channel for you and there's another video for you to watch up here i will be doing in the next 24 to 48 hours ranking every single one of the kingdom of the planet of the apes movies so be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video and all of our videos that release in the future but for now i'm nico Luro. thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next video right here on the silver screen dudes bye for now